Hi, the topic for today's video is top 20 functions in pandas. Before starting the video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell notification icon to never miss out on our videos. Now pandas is no doubt an important library to use for data analysts. As soon as you have the data, you can perform these 20 functions to get the idea of our data. Let's grow to these top 20 functions in pandas. The first function the pandas offer is reading a file. So for reading a file, we require pandas library to import. So we import pandas as pd. Then we can read any type of file. For here I have read a csv file which names tested.csv. And if you want to know more about how we can read multiple files or different file extensions, then you can refer to the pandas tutorial which we have on our channel. Then I have our data read. Then let's see the top and bottom of the data set. So we have the data set df. Then let's see the head. So we have passenger id, survive, p class, name, sex, age, sibling and spouse, park, then ticket fare, cabin and embark columns. Let's see the tail. Now we have the tail of our data set. Then let's get complete information of all co columns in our table. So let's see by running df.info. So dot info gives us the information of our whole data set. It says 418 entries from 0 to 417, then total of 12 columns. Then it says the passenger ID has 418 non null values, means no null value present in passenger ID. and and the type of the column is integer type and this is for the whole data set so we can see in age we have some null values then in fair we have one null value and in cabin we have many null values and we also can see the data types of each and every column now let's see how we can see the shape and size of the data set now the shape is 418 rows and 12 columns and size is basically rows into columns. So 418 into 12 which is 5016. Now let's see how we can choose n number of random samples from the data set. Now this is very important step as we have if we have to analyze or know our data better. So we can use this df.sample or dot sample function and give the sample size of 10, 15, whichever we want and we can have a clear idea about how our data set is. Now we can see we have samples randomized. Now if we run one more time, you have another set of samples. So it is random for each and every run. So you can run it two to three times and look at the data and predict how the data is and how it is variant. And let's see the next function, which is get the standard mathematical analysis of each column of data set. Now, what do we mean by mathematical analysis? So we have minimum, maximum, standard deviations, mean, then we have the quartiles and everything. So let's see how we can get that. See, we have the count, then mean, standard deviation, the minimum and maximum, and these quartiles, three quartiles. Yeah, now let's transpose if you want to have the columns as the indexes and the indexes as the columns, then we can use dot t and transpose it. Here we have. Then the next function is find number of distinct values. This is an important function as it as it will directly tell you how many categorical values are there in your data set. Now n unique. What it will do is it will tell us how many different values are there in our each column. So in passenger ID, as it is an ID, so each passenger should have a different ID. So we have 418 unique values. Then in survived, we have zeros and ones. So two unique values. In P class also, we have three unique values, which is, let's see, one, two, and three. And in name, so name of each and every passenger is different. If we get some another values like 400 or 300, then we have same value, uh, same name. So we have to 
delete those rows or to treat them wisely now in sex we have male and female so two different values and this is for each and every column now let's see the next function which is how to find if there are any variable with missing values in it so for that this is a function is na dot any if there are any null values in the column is any and any of the rows of the column then it returns true see here there were there was only one null value in fair it returns true so we have trues for null values and false for no null values in the columns so what does dot is null do so dot is null gives the whole data set and for each value it returns if it is null or not so the first value is not null so the second is not null so here we can see the first in cabin is null so it return true true and likewise in age you can see here it's true then false likewise now if you want to sum up all this and let's see how we can do that so find the number of null values in each column so df dot is null dot sum so when we sum it and we have 86 null values in each one null value in fair and three to seven null values in cabin now let's get the names of the columns so just run df dot columns and we have the column names then if you want to find the smallest and the largest values from a column you can do it with dot 10 smallest and this 10 just gives us the top 10 smallest in the fair column and this n largest 10 so it gives the top 10 largest values in the age column so in fair the smallest fair was 0 to 7.05 dollars and if you see the n largest in ages and top 10 in that so age was 76 then 67 then 64 and till 61 so th these are the top 10 ages and automatically you can see this is arranged in descending order now let's see what is lock and i lock so lock is like this is the rows the range of rows we want and this is the column range we want so we want the rows from 1 to 5 or 1 to 6 and then we have we want only these two columns which are age and fair now you can see we have from 1 to 6 and 6 is inclusive in lock but in i lock 6 is exclusive and we can pass the integer columns or integer indexes to columns in i lock if you want to know more about i lock and lock you can refer to the pandas playlist where i have covered lock and i lock in detail but here you can see we can have integer values to columns as well and the 5 5th index was of age and 9th index was of fair so we have the same but here 6 is exclusive and here 6 is inclusive in lock and i lock now let's see how we can slice the data without using lock and i lock so when we do df 1 to 6 so we have 1 to 5 rows and each and every column in it and why did it do this let's cut it yes group by in pandas now what does group by does so group by groups by the column and gives the columns which we want and let's see here we have group by p class so p class has 1 2 and 3 then it will use this age and fair and groups by the p class so age and fair columns will be grouped by the p class according to the p class and then we get the mean of the age and the fair according to the p class now here you can see we have p class 1 2 3 then age we have mean of p class 1 and we have mean the values of fair which were lying in p class 1 so that is all and now if you want to group by p class but what if we use the function sum so it will sum up all the fair values in the p class on the in the passenger class 1 in the passenger class 2 in the passenger class 3 
here it just gave the mean values of age and fair but if what if you want the sum values of it then we get the sum values for 0 1 0 and many other as you can see passenger class 1 has greater fare than passenger class 2 has less and then likewise now the next function is sorting according to one column now what if you want to sort the whole data set according to one column then we use dot sort values function and we give pass in by which column do we want to sort our data set so we give p class then when we use ascending is equal to false then we have our data set sorted by p class in descending order see we have three first then we have at the last all the passenger class ones now let's see how we can perform queries in data frames and df dot query now dot query function and then we write our query in the quotes which is take the ages from which are greater than 45 and just print the first five first five rows of it now let's see we have the first five rows where age is greater than 45 ages are greater than 45 if you want the all the rows then we can we get all the rows and if you want its shape and know it's what the shape of this is so we can put it like this so we have 52 rows which has age greater than 45 but we don't want that we just want the rows and the columns so we have over here the first five of the data set so let's get on to the next function which says get unique values from a column so how can we get a unique values from a column so when we pass in dfp class dot unique so we get the unique values which are 3 2 1 now if we pass in some other values like sex then oh it is s capital we have to check everything so we have male and female likewise you can do for each and every column we want now if you want to know how many space columns are taking in your computer then use memory usage if you want to know the memory usage of each and every column in the memory then you can just run df dot memory usage and we have this memory usage the data type is integer and if you want to write a file to csv now suppose we have a csv file and we want to write something onto it so this function will write the data frame xyz or file name to our df column so we have our here we have df data frame then don't forget to put csv in the file name extension so we have to put this dot csv if you don't put it then it gives an error then we put dot csv and then if you run then all the contents from file name dot csv is copied to our data frame which is df and you can do this for each and every csv file or two or more csv files you can stack it together using dot to csv function this is all from the video these were the top 20 functions that pandas provide and after running all these functions you will be able to get a clear idea about your data so if you like the video and gain some insights from the video please like the video and if you have any doubts please put in the comment section and we'll get back to your doubts thank you